Let's bring in Jeff Clavier. He's the founder of Soft Tech VC, venture capital firm with investments in both Twitter and Groupon. Last year, Business Week named him one of the top 25 tech angel investors. Jeff, welcome back to In Business. You're looking at uh, LinkedIn shares well above $82 a share. Are you surprised at the interest in this stock? I'm not surprised at the interest in the stock because it's by definition, as Corey said this morning, something that gets you an email every day. And so LinkedIn is a very retail uh, brand. So I'm not surprised that people actually try and buy it. Certainly, since they priced at 45, um, one would have expected that would be sort of the top end of the range. And guess what? There is actual real demand in the, out there, whether it's institutional or retail, for the stock. So it's. You know, it's good news for a bunch of people, so I'm really happy for all my friends who, uh, who own the stock. Oh, yeah. I asked uh, Jeff Wiener, who was on with us live from the floor of the exchange, about that pricing at 45 and then where they're actually trading at. Um, what's your read on, on this sort of deal they got in terms of the bankers that helped put those valuations on there and bring them to market? Did they uh, leave money on the table? Look, if you compare um, with the early IPOs um, on, of the internet stocks way back when, at that time the, the companies were trading at a few, you know, hundred million dollars. Right. Here you're looking at a very serious four billion dollar valuation for a company which has a forward, you know, projection of what, you know, four to five hundred million dollars this year in terms of revenue. So it's a very, you know, healthy um, price to sales. Because the float is actually not that, that much. There aren't that many shares being available. My sense is that there was so much demand that we have a bit of an artificial effect on, on LinkedIn stock, which you know, got it up um, $40. Uh, at the same time, it's the first of the um, social networking sort of major companies uh, going out. And so I'm not surprised that many people tried to get a piece of it. Mm -hmm. So people saying that they, uh, the, the they were shortchanged in terms of valuations might be overreacting to just what is an initial first day trade. Uh, that would be my reading. And look, uh, at four billion in change, um, I'm pretty sure that the investors and and the employees were already very happy. I know that they're popping champagne uh, mm -hmm. at LinkedIn's uh, headquarter in uh, in Mountain View. And the fact that the VCs actually decide not to sell any stock is actually telling. It means that Sequoia and Bessemer uh, and Greylock believe that there is actual uh, real run potential in, um, in their LinkedIn's holding. And so they're just, you know, sticking to the stock. Uh, it's a vote of confidence for you. Well, uh, well, talk to me about what this means for other uh, venture capitalists like yourself. We haven't seen a lot of exits uh, up until now. So not only is this first social media company to go public, it's the first big, big exit that we've seen. Does this say this is the first of many? I mean, are the prospects brightening for venture capitalists like you? Well, certainly it's, it's good news for a lot of, uh, I would say, the top uh, companies in our space, you mentioned Zynga, you mentioned uh, definitely Facebook and, and, and Groupon, which have real revenue and real ramp and real footprint. Look at um, uh, LinkedIn's you know, performance only the first day, so we'll see after the first week, the first month. But certainly the fact that there was so much demand in this stock and, and the, the ratios are so um, hefty uh, certainly means uh, a lot of, of pent-up demand for our sector, and that's obviously good news. Mm -hmm. The issue we've had for the past two, three years has been that, oh, actually more, very limited IPO, um, m &A not being a bit active, but not that much. And so we have, you know, almost hundreds of companies which would eventually be able to get out if the market was uh, was interested in um, in those stocks so we really see that as a as a really good news well when you talk to so many of those companies like twitter um, and others that, that i know so you have stakes in you ask management there and they say oh, we, we don't need to raise capital that way we don't need to go to the public markets we've got plenty of, of capital we right in our own backyard here in silicon valley so well, why do you think linkedin chose to go public and go public now. LinkedIn has been has been around for nine years. At some point, you know, you need to unlock that potential. And I think that yes, of course, they could have raised a lot of money in the in the public you know, in the private market, sorry. But A, I think that they do need a public currency, which they have now because um, 
LinkedIn hasn't been very acquisitive as a, as a company. Mm -hmm. They've done a couple of minor acquisitions. I think that that stock, especially with that valuation, gives them a lot of opportunities now to go and pick up you know, companies that would be very um, complementary to their business. And so I think that's a good thing. And there's also the fact that at some point, you just, you just need to get out. So LinkedIn has been around for a while. I think it's, it's great that they're out. Certainly a, um, a Groupon or, or Twitter uh, who have been, you know, which have been around for just a few years, don't have the same pressure to get out. However, the ability to get a public currency, which allows them to do a lot of things in the market, whether it's buying um, other companies or sort of having the ability to raise <clears throat> really a lot of money um, in, in the retail market, is certainly sort of uh, an opportunity that they, they won't pass on, I think. All right, Jeff, always good talking to you. Jeff Clavier, Soft Tech VC. Thank you so much.